Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Ksubois Daf Gimel. We are holding on Beis Amid Beis, three lines from the bottom. Ella Rava Svara Danaf Sheikha Amar. So yesterday we learned that typically when one's wedding date arrives and he chooses not to proceed with that wedding, he is Chayiv Mezoinois Ishto. He has to look after her Mezoinois. He has to support her, feed her, because after all, he's obligated to feed his wife from the point of marriage onward. If he chooses to postpone his Nisuin, he is chayev to look after her. However, if the reason for the postponement is unrelated to his choice, it's an oinus. The Chachamim say, wait a couple of days until Yoim Revi, when you can marry. Or there's some other factor in the way. He's unwell, she's unwell. An oinus is in place, something beyond his control, he's potter. He no, no longer has that obligation to look after her until he actually marries. Comes Rava and he says, however, when it comes to a get, we don't reckon with Oynes, just because it's beyond his control. It doesn't. Uh, we, we can't ignore it. Ain Oynes begitten. So this fellow, this fellow wrote a get, gave it to his wife on condition on condition that I will return within 12 months. If I don't return, have your get, the get should be activated. So he sort of made a tonight, conditioned the get upon his non-return, and he didn't return, but not by choice. An oinus took place, which prevented his return, says Rava. The fact is, he did not return. No return, he has get, despite the fact that there was an oinus which prevented his return. Why? Why do we ignore the fact that it's an oinus? So typically, throughout the entire Torah, oinus is, is a good excuse. Why, in this case, is it not? Says Rava, says the Gemara, Ella Rava Svara Denav Sheikamar. We actually tried to find a source for Rava's halacha. We were not successful until the Gemara concludes you're right. We have no actual source. It was Rav's own chiddush, el Rav svara de Rav Amar, his own svara, his own thinking. What is the reason for ein oynes begitten mishum tenuos? We're concerned about these women who are modest, extra tenua, um mishum prutzes. Conversely, on the other hand, we have nashim who act inappropriately, and we'll take this whole thing lightly. We're concerned about these people. Explains the Gemara mishum tenuos. The concern there is like this. The Amr's likely have a get. If you're going to tell me that if his non return was caused by an oinus, in which case the condition is not deemed to have been met, right? there's an oinus that held him back. So the get is not chal. The Amr's likely have a get. If that is true, it's going to create hardship. Zimnin deloy onus. We have an Isha who is tsunua, extra careful, extra modest extra diligent and careful in halacha, she'll have a, a fear, a concern, that perhaps her husband's lack of return was due to an oinus. You never know, maybe there was an accident that held him back. Zimnan delay on us. In truth, it so happened that he was not an oinus. He willingly, you know, did not return. He wanted to get to be activated. But she's thinking the sovereign, she's thinking the honest. Perhaps... He couldn't make his way back. He did not keep his condition. There was no tanai fulfilled. He wanted to come, he couldn't. So since that non-return was not a, a willful non-return, the condition was not kept. The, tana, the, the get is not activated. And she would not want to remarry. Umi Agna shall be tied down. Aguna means tied down, shackled down. She won't remarry. Viyasva shall sit around waiting for the Husband and the get. That's one concern. On the other side of the equation, we have people who perhaps are less than careful when it comes to these things. Omishim prutzes. Women are perhaps going to act inappropriately. They're not going to be exercising due diligence. The Amr Slayla If you're going to tell me that in a case where he could not come back due to an illness, 
You don't hold it against him. You don't fault him. We don't consider it a non-return because it was an oynes, and therefore there is no get. You know what could happen? Zimnin de oynes. Perhaps that's exactly what happened. There was an oynes preventing his return. And this prut, so this woman who's not being too careful with halacha, she's seeking to remarry. She'll claim, ah, everything was fine. There was no oynes. He decided not to come back and there's a get. She goes and marries. Benimtza get bottle, ubenei mamzerim, and in truth it turns out there is no get, because it was an oynes preventing his return. There is no get, and when she remarries and has children, there are children of mamzerim. So due to these two contrasting concerns, the tznois who might overreact, the prutzos who might ignore reality, the chachamim ignored, discounted this oynes factor, and they say, look, when you give a get. You make a condition. And the get is chal if I do not come back within a set prescribed amount of time. And you do not come back. The get is chal. The get becomes active irrespective of circumstance. Now we no longer have these concerns of the tznois and the prutzes. He didn't come back. It's a get. There's no need to investigate further. But really, Minat Torah it is not a get, because he did not fulfill his tanai. He wanted to come back, and an oinus held him back. Asks the Gemara, Umi iko midi. Can it be a case? Can it be a possibility that midai rais, will you have a get? I mean, I tell you, it's not a get, because as Rashi points out, three lines from the top, the midai rais, will you have a get? We find an oinus claim. In the Torah itself, Dover. A young woman was forced to be involved with a man, and the Pasuk says we don't hold it against her. If it was forced, if it was Aynas. Aynas is an exemption. He didn't fulfill his tanai willingly. He wanted to come back, he couldn't. So in Torah, it's not a get. Umishum tsnuis, umishum prutzeis, says the Gemara. But because of your considerations, tsnuis and the prutzeis, sharina and eshes ish la'amu. So when I tell you it's not a get, but because of these concerns, you're going to make it a get and allow the eshes ish, an ish who is technically still married. No get means an eshes ish. You can remarry? How can you do that? It's a real concern that you did tsnuis and the prutzeis. It's not enough to allow an eshes ish to remarry. Answers the Gemara, yes, it is. You know why? In, correct, yes. Call the Mekadish. Whenever a person does Kedushin, Adai to the Rabban and the Kaddish. He's doing it on condition that the Chachamim will consent to his marriage. Rashi says, that's why we say, uh, Taisa says, that's why we say, during Kedushin, we say, Kedas Moshe Yisrael, right? Hareyat Mekodesh Asli B'Tabas Zoom, we add. Three words, Kedas Moshev Yisrael, in accordance with the view of Moshe and Kali Yisrael. It's sort of a, a tanai, it's a condition. In your Kedushin, it says the Gemara of Afki Inu Rabban on the Kedushin, in this case, Chachamim sort of uprooted the entire marriage retroactively. The Ritva says it's like a person makes a tanai, I mean, a Kaddish, on condition that it rains, and it doesn't rain, so there's no Kedushin. And the Ritva adds, even if it should so happen that a person did not utter those words, Kedas Moshe Yisrael, still, he says, Stama, the Stam, the assumption is that he had that in mind. He calls it Dvarim Shebeliboy Ubelev Kaladim. Everybody is cognizant of that, of the fact that you have to make a Kedushin in accordance with Moshe Yisrael, the directives of the leaders of Kal Yisrael based on terror concerns. In this case, if it so, so happened that he gave a get with this type of tanai and he could not fulfill the tanai due to oinus, chachamim, out of concern for the tznois and the prutzois, activate the get. How do they do that? By means of this method of afkiinu rabban and the they undo the entire marriage retroactively. He was never married to her. Says the Gemara, Amalir Ravina Ravashi, I understand, Tainach the Kaddish Bekaspa. Sure, if he gave her money as Kedushin, so the Chacham can undo that. Hefker best than Hefker. You know what, it's... Uh, 
whether it's Hefker Bezdin or whether it's, um, more simply speaking, they can just turn it into Matana. Right? If you gave it to her with that in mind, on condition, right? it's a condition on condition that the Chachamim consent, they did not consent, then it turns into a gift. It's no longer a condition. It's just a gift to her. So money can work. Kaddish be a meimar, but we know there are other ways of doing kedushin. Interaction as married, that is also a means, that is also a method of kedushin. How can we discount that act? And so the Gemara yes, shavu rabban and libi loso ibilas nus. Chacham considered that act as his nus. They under the uh, the kedushin aspect of the of the act. Continues the Gemara. So until now we have Rava's first version, Ein Oynes Begitten. We don't reckon with these circumstances. Oynes is not an excuse in terms of fulfilling fulfilling a condition to activate a get. So in Torah, Oynes is a ptur, it's an exemption. But the Rabbanon, due to these factors, the concern regarding the Tznuis, who might be overly concerned, the Prutzois who might be less than overly concerned, we say, you know what? We forget about the Oynes factor. How do they do it? Because initially, his condition was contingent upon the Chachamims confirming that condition and consenting to that marriage. In this case, they undid it. Here comes another version of Rava, just the opposite. Amri. Others had a different version of Rava. Amar Rava v'chein linyan Just like when it comes to his Mizoynes obligations. We reckon with Oynes, Likewise, when it comes to fulfilling a t'nai forget, get the same thing would apply there. Al makosavar rava yesh enes begitin. Likewise, by begitin, oynes is a factor to reckon with. He gave her a get. Al manas, that I don't come back within 12 months, he did not return due to oynes. That's not considered a non-return, because he wanted to come back. He was prevented. By factors beyond his control. There is no t- tonight fulfilled, there is no get. Yesh oynes begit. Meisve, here comes Akasha. Basically, we're going to go over the Bryces that yesterday we tried to present as possible sources for Rubbers uh, holding Ein oynes begit. Now we switched it to Yesh oynes. We're going to use the same Mishnahs as Akasha to Rub. You're telling me that oynes is a factor to reckon with? Here comes a kash. Meisvi. Hareza gitich. Im lei bossi mekan vashnei masar chedish. Here's your get. On condition, I do not return within 12 months. U meis besoich shnei masar chedish. He passes away within that time. Eino get. It doesn't work. That's the aloch. Let's make a deal. Meis who deino get. Only because he died. That's the problem. Because once he dies, he cannot issue a get. And since he died before the 12 months are up, he's no longer here to be megarish. Ha chala. Apparently if you simply fell ill, and that prevented his return. So as soon as 12 months are up, he has not returned, Hareza again, it works, even though he was prevented by circumstances beyond his control. Apparently, Oynes is ignored. Answers the Gemara, no, lo'ilam e'malach, perhaps I'll tell you, cholo nami again, even if he would have fell ill, and his lack of return was due to an Oynes. It's still not a get. Because not his fault. Tanoinus. So why did the Mishnah specifically mention Misa? Because the Mishnah was trying to inform us that halacha, the ain get lachar Misa. The person cannot issue a get after death, which in itself is a chiddush as we discussed yesterday. But what's the chiddush? Ain get lachar Misa, that's been discussed in the beginning of this Mishnah. Why repeat it? Perhaps the Mishnah repeats the halacha to undo, to oppose the other shita of Rabbi Seinu, who hold that in this case, since he wrote a shta, a zman, he wrote a date in the, in the, in the, in the get, we say that uh, even if he died within the prescribed period, the get is chal, retroactively, you know, the mission is trying, trying to undo that shita, that's all the mission is trying to speak about, this halacha of ein get l'achamisa, but we're not alluding to chala, to oynes, that's not part of our discussion, and don't derive any Conclusions regarding an oynus. Tashma, here comes another kasha. This man wrote his wife again and he says, It's going to become activated from this moment forward. If I do not return within 12 months. 
that happens, let the get become activated retroactively from this moment, this moment that I'm still alive. And what happened to Mace? Besuch Shemesachayda, she passed away within 12 months. So he sort of fulfilled this tonight. Problem is, he's dead. No, I raise a get. The get works because it's Chal Lemafreya retroactively from that moment of Me'achshav. That's the mission. My love, should we not assume? Apparently, who had in the Chala? The same halach would apply. Um, whether he died, whether he got sick and couldn't come back. As soon as he's not back, 12 months are up, the get is activated. So we see that an oinus is not a player. An oinus is not a fact. We don't care if it was an accident. The fact is, he did not return. That's a kasha and rava. No, says the Gemara, loy, meis dafka. Perhaps if any other oinus would have held him back, you would have to take that into consideration. But when he dies, he wants to get to work. It's exactly why he gave her the get. They have no children. He doesn't want her to be slated for Yivam, to have to marry the Yavam. So when he gave her the get, he included this scenario as well. If I don't come back, whether willingly or whether he dies, that's also, that's also good. He wants to get to be Chal in that case. Well, let's say he, he was on his way back and he fell ill on, on route. Perhaps that wouldn't work. That's an oinus. He didn't want to get to be activated under those circumstances. Just as Robert tells us, Yesh oinus begidden. Tashmaya comes another raya. A raya that we ignore the oinus. Mahud amarlu. So Reuven gave a get to his wife Rachel and then he turns to the Adam. And he declares as follows, Eloi Asina, he gives a condition, Eloi Asina, if I don't return, Rikan Vat Shloishim Yoim, from today until 30 days, meaning, if I don't come back within 30, we have a Gita, I want to get to work. And what happened? He tried, Asaba Seif Tlosin Yoim, and he comes at the last second, Upaski Mabri, stuck on the other side of the river, and the, you know, the shuttle, the ferry, which transports passengers to this side of the river, into the city, Happened to be on the on the other side, on the wrong side. If Amalu and he calls out to everybody, Chazu, look, the Asoy, I came, I arrived. Chazu, the Asoy, take a look, I'm here. Vamar Shmuel Loish Mimas, yes, not called returning. He's still on the other side of the river, he's not in the city. And the get goes forward. What do you mean? He wanted it to come back. He was there. It was an oinus. Answers the Gemara. There, it's different. It's a common occurrence. He should have anticipated. Why do you wait till the last minute? It, you should have stipulated that in, into your condition. should have said, look, when I come back, if the ferry's on the wrong side, consider it a return. Consider it that I came back and I nullified the condition. That's an oinus which is anticipated. The kivan the boyli lasnui, he could have, he should have conditioned it into his condition. Well, I asked, he didn't include it. Ihu, who the afsid and afshay. He undid himself. He is the reason for his own undoing. When you anticipate a hurdle, you should have expressed it. If you would have wanted that we should take that into consideration. The fact is that he didn't mention it. The fact is that he just said, if I don't return, make it a get. He didn't come back. But if it's an illness which is not anticipated, not forecasted, not foreseen, an illness or some other emergency, perhaps, we do not hold it against him. And he's Potter from keeping us tonight, just as Robert tells us, Yesh Oynes Piket. So, bottom line is, do we reckon with an Oynes by Get? According to version number one, Minatori, yes, but the Rabbana, no. We have the Tsnois, the Prutsois. How do we do it? We're Mafkia, the Kedushin, because after all, every Yid, every Erlich Yid conditions his Kedushin on the Chachamim's consent. In version number two, Robert says, by Gitan as well, an Oynes is a factor to reckon with. Unless, as the Gemara concludes, if it's an oynus to shkiach, where you should have stipulated it, in that case we ignore the oynus consideration. Back to the Mishnah. When does a psula marry? On Wednesday. Why? Because twice a week the Bezdin holds court, Monday and Thursday, we want the marriage to take place. Immediately before the Bezdin sets up court, because if there's any concern regarding her status, if she's, a, she, if she's to be discovered as a uh, perhaps non-Basula, where there's question regarding her Isser, we want him to be fresh and concerned and 
ready to go to Bezin the next day. But why not marry on a Sunday, which is in anticipation of Monday? The answer is, Chachamim were concerned about Bnei Yisrael, they should have a respectable marriage, enough time to prepare, give them, give them three days to get everything ready, and then marry on Wednesday. Amar of Shmo Bar Yitzchak Leishonu. When do we say that a Basula marries on Wednesday? Elamita Kanas Ezra Ve'elach. That's only starting from that point in history where Takanas Ezra was activated. Ezra made a Takana that the Bezdin should hold court on Mondays and Thursdays. So that justifies this Wednesday stipulation. She'ein bati din in kvuin ela b'sheni v'chamishi. Where the Bezdin is only going to hold court on Monday and Thursday. Aval koidim Takanas Ezra. But before Ezra came along and introduced his takana, Shabbat he didn't kvuin b'chol yom. We have the best holding court whenever. There's no exact uh, specified day of the week. Whenever they have a need, they set up shop. So at that point, there is no preference to Wednesday over Tuesday over Monday, and therefore we change the halacha. Isha nises b'chol yom, and Isha can marry any day of the week. There's no uh, reason to prefer Wednesday over Tuesday. Asks the Gemara, "Well, are you going back in history? Koydem Takanas Ezra? You're speaking about a point before Ezra's time? That's that's past. Why does that concern us today? My Dahava Hava, whatever was, was. Why do you even have to present it in the Gemara here? It's past history. Now we have Takanas Ezra. Bezdin is going to hold session Monday and Thursday. We have the Takana. Why discuss past history? Hachikamer, no, he meant like this. It's relevant even today. If you have a bezin today whose schedule corresponds to the time of before Ezra, Kikoyim Takanas Ezra, if you have a, a city whose bezin holds court on any day of the week without any preference, just like before Ezra came, that changes the equation. Now we have no preference to Monday. Uh, to Wednesday over Tuesday over Monday because there's no set schedule to the Bezin of that city. Says the Gemara, I understand that that factor is eliminated. The Bezin factor no longer plays a role because they're not specified to a specific day. But what about the other factor? Habi'in on Shaktu. We spoke about Shaktu as well. Why not marry on Sunday? Because Chachamim were concerned about the Ibn Yisrael. We want to <clears throat> ensure that there's Sufficient time to prepare for that wedding. If you can marry on uh, on Sunday or Monday, you're not going to have three days to prepare. The Tariyachle was speaking that this fellow already prepared his wedding. So there's no concern of Shaktu. And therefore, there's no preference to one day over the other. My Shaktu, what is this Shaktu that you're always mentioning, that you're always referring to? The Sanya, we have the Bryce, and Mima, or Rubusul, and Nisus Why is it that the Chachamim established Wednesday as the appropriate day? Of marriage for a besula, it's based on tanas besulim. Shemayeloi tanas besulim, because if this husband discovers her to be a non besula, and then there's question regarding her status, he has the bezin available the very next morning. Hayyamashkim le bezin, he'd get up to the bezin and address his concerns. That's why he marries on Wednesday, which is a day before Thursday. This man of bezin. But what about marrying on Sunday, which is a day before Monday, which is also a man of bezin? But he nasi be'echad b'shabs. Marry on Sunday. If he may yolay tanas besulim, if he has any besulim concern, or he mashkim le bezin, he will get up the next morning and approach bezin. So what's wrong with Sunday? Answers the Gemara shaktu. Chachamim al takanas bnei Yisrael. Chachamim o cognizant, o sensitive, o concerned about Takanas Bnei Yisrael, to look after, to properly look after the Bnei Yisrael. We want them to have a respectful marriage. We want them to have a, um, a proper, properly arranged wedding, properly prepared suda. She hey Adam Torech Besuda Shlesha Yomim. We want to compel the Chassan to be busy preparing for the suda for three days. Echad b'shabbos, v'sheni b'shabbos, or shlisha b'shabbos, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and then comes the wedding. Ubervi kainsa. Continues the price. Now we're going to have some uh, variations in this halacha because of uh, other, other factors, other circumstances that perhaps might come into play, which will change the wedding date from Wednesday to a different day. Umi sakana ve'eloch. But when there was a sakana, from that point onward, 
Nakua Um Lichnis Bishlishi. The minute turned into Tuesday. They changed from Wednesday to Tuesday. Veloy Micha Biad Chacham. Chacham did not protest. They allowed it to stick. Ube Sheni Li. Look, Marsum will explain what this means. What Sakana are we speaking about? The Brisa continues with other variations of this halacha. Ube Sheni Li Yichnis. But on Monday, you should never marry. Vimach Marsa Oynes. Muta. But if it's due to an Oynes, an emergency, that's allowed as well. Umar Frishna Sachosam and Akalaleli Shabbos Tchila. Says the Brisa, if the first time they're meant to interact is on Friday night, we separate, we don't allow it, we play Shu Oysa because it's causing a wound. Okay, that's the Brisa. Now let's go back. Typically you marry on Wednesday, but if there's a Sakana factor, the Minig was to push it back to Tuesday. My Sakana, what type of Sakana are we speaking about? Ilema de Amri, is it some sort of a decree that the non Jews decreed and they said if a besula marries on Wednesday we don't want that, we want to oppose we want to nullify the uh, you know, the mitzvahs and the dinim of Klal Yisrael Chas Rishom. if she marries on Wednesday besula nisus limervi tehorek, she'll get killed, that's the sakana so we can push it back to Tuesday, but why does the Bryce say no'agu the minig wants to change it to Tuesday, no'agu oh, it's only a minig, it's only something which uh, some it should be an established system. They should be oiker. The Chachamim should now absolutely change the day. It's a sakana. It should be oiker from Wednesday to Tuesday. Answers the Gemara, Amar Rabbah. The concern is not bodily harm. That wasn't the sakana that we're concerned with. Rather, the Amri, the Goyim, decreed, they declared, Besula Hanusas Bimaravi. Any Besula marries on Wednesday, before her marriage, she has to interact physically with the hegemon, with the authority, with the uh, governor. That's the concern. And that prompted the, the minute to switch from Wednesdays to Tuesdays. Asks the Gemara, but why does the Brysa refer to it as a sakana, which indicates bodily harm? That's not so. Hi, sakana. Why is it a sakana? Oinesu. It's serious, it's concerning, it's an oinus, it's a forcible interaction, but, but it's not called sakana. Answers the Gemara because it could lead to sakana. We have these women who are modest. The master of Nafshai Luktala, they're willing to give up their lives. Allow themselves to be killed rather than get involved with this experience. The Aslan de Sakana, and it leads them to sakana. That's why the Bryce refers to it as sakana. But why uh, does it lead to Sakana? We should just inform everybody the Oynes Shari, this uh, Oynes interaction is mutter. And it doesn't make her usher on her husband. In which case, nobody will be my So Why does the Bryce refer to it as Sakana? Answers the Gemara. We don't want to disseminate that information. We don't want to inform them that it's mutter. You know why? We're concerned about the women on the other side of the spectrum. Who are inclined to interact improperly. In which case, if we tell them that Oynes is mutter, it may lead them to do it even willingly beratzen. So we don't want to tell anybody about this halacha. Don't forget we have the wives of the kohanim. You see, a wife of a kohen who interacts with another fellow as married becomes usher on her husband even if it was an emergency, even if it was beyond her control, even if it was an Oynes. And they'll be my nefesh rather than let themselves become usher on their husbands. And that's why the Brysa chooses to refer to this phenomenon as a sakana, because they'll put their lives in danger. If so, says the Gemara, why does the Brysa say, no, I'll go um, you know, the, uh, the min- minute we came to switch it to the Tuesday. Well, the Akri, let the Chachamim just uproot it, formally and officially, say, look, uh, because of this uh, circumstance, no more set and designated wedding dates. Get married, Sunday, Monday, to whatever, to avoid this oynes, uh, this sakana. Answers the Gemara, and this is a testament to the eternity of Torah and Klal Yisro. Gzeira avida de bottle. We're meant to know that the gzeira of a guy, as difficult as it may be, but it's a limited time hardship. It's going to be bottle eventually, as opposed to the Torah, which is eternal. Etakanta de rabbonah. Etakonas chazal mikam gzeira in face of gzeira. Loy akrinan, we do not cancel or uproot. So we leave the zaman intact, although the minig was 
to play smart to avoid this gzera and switch to a different day. And this is an interesting kasha. Why didn't we answer the same terrorist before? You see, initially we figured there was a threat of bo- bodily harm. You get married on Wednesday, you're dead. And I asked, so why don't we just uproot? Why don't we just do an akira on these man to avoid the sakona? And the Gemara did not answer this terrorist. Why not? So he says, the Gemara's kasha earlier was very different than here. See, earlier, what was their motive? What was the guy trying to do? Trying to oppose the terror. You have a takana. Get married on Wednesdays. You do that, you're killed. They were challenging the authority of, of Torah and mitzvahs. So the kasha there was, okay, let's avoid that by switching it to Tuesday. This way they, they feel they accomplished their, uh, their goal. They were trying to uh, tinker with our Torah. Fine, we switch it to a different day. And that would satisfy them, right? They would no longer threaten us. That was the kasha. Let's be eiker to a different day. Let's make another set designated day. Tuesday instead of Wednesday. This way we avoid the gzair of the goyim. That's a, a fair question. That's not called canceling, uh, you know, the, the concept of Zman Nesun. We still have Zman Nesun. Just switch it from Wednesday to Tuesday. Make that the formal official Zman Nesun going forward. That's a fair uh, suggestion. And therefore we, we left it as a kasha. Why not? What's wrong with that? And then we might have to go to the next shot, which is it was a spiritual threat. They said, you get married on Wednesday, first go to the governor. The kasha on that is, okay, let's cancel the zman. We'll no longer have a designated zman as suin. Because if you switch it to Tuesdays, that becomes the formal date. Then the guy will say, okay, whoever marries on Tuesday, come visit me. You're not going to accomplish anything. The kasha here was, let's uproot conceptually this whole zman as suin. Marry whatever you want. This way the guy will never know what's going on. He'll never know when there's a wedding in town. He'll never get involved. That was the kasha. That's a problem because now you're being acred this zman as suin. You're being acred. You're canceling the concept of a takanas chazal of his man as suin. On that, the Gemara says, we don't do that. We don't tinker with the Torah even when we're faced with the Gzera. So sure, the minak was to find another day, but the Takanas Chazal remained intact. Asks the Gemara, but what did they accomplish? So the Minig was to marry on Tuesdays. Well, now he'll come, uh, bother us on Tuesdays. Yachi, Bushlishinami on Tuesdays as well. Asi Yibol will come and interact with his colleagues. Miss Fekalek, Nafshe, it's an uncertainty. He doesn't know if there are weddings in towns on, tu- on, on Tuesday. It's not a set date, so he's not going to uproot and come running on Tuesdays. And this way, you'll avoid him. The Brisa continues. Ubesheni lo yichnes. So, lachatchili marry on Wednesday. There's a concern. You go back to Tuesday, but not on Monday. Vimachmas oynes muter. There's an oynes at play. Then that's okay. My oynes. What exactly are we speaking about here? Ilay mahada amaron. Is it the same concern as before? Why are you switching the uh, your wording? Hasam kare le sakana. There you refer to it as a sakana. Vachal kare le oynes. Now you call it as an oynes. We saw another kasha. Hasam nagu. Previously, he said, "Well, because of that concern of the hegmon, the minig was to switch it." Nagu. Hacha. Here, you're using the word mutter. It's mutter. It's a whole different language. Apparently, we're referring to something else entirely different. Amarav. The concern here is, they'll snatch the uh, wedding provisions. The Amri. The word goes out that sart sava balir. There's a rumor that the uh, general. Of the non-Jewish army is coming to town and is going to snatch away all the uh, all the wedding provisions. They won't have any food for the wedding. So to accommodate that concern, we can push it back to Monday as well to preempt this uh, this robbery. Asks the Gemara, well, why does that justify marrying on Monday? Hey, Chidami, what's the case? Either Asi V'chalaf, if the fellow is coming and, you know, leaving after a couple of days, then just wait until next Wednesday. Li'akim, wait till next Wednesday and keep it to Wednesday. But Tzrich, apparently, we're speaking to Asi V'chalaf. He's coming to town and sticking around. So you can't wait. So we push it back to Monday. Asks the Gemara, Begimol mi'alichnes. So this fellow is coming on, on Wednesday, just marry on Tuesday. Why do you have to push back to Monday? As parva the day, true, the actual general is coming on Wednesday, but his uh, advance team 
is coming a day earlier. Begimel Ka'asu are coming on Tuesday. So you have to push it back to Monday. If you buy the same another Pshat, my Machmas Oynas, what's the Oynas concern that we're addressing? Because the Sanya, it's an Avelis, a morning, which uh, descended upon the Chasen. Because the Sanya we learned on a Brais. So the wedding provisions are prepared. The bread is baked, and the meat was uh, prepared, you know, the animals were shechted, and the wine was diluted, ready for serving. And suddenly tragedy strikes father of the chasen, who generally is involved in uh, preparing the wedding, or the mother of the kala, who generally is involved in preparing the kala for marriage. They passed away. So what do we do? If we're going to cancel the wedding, there won't be anybody available to help out and prepare properly. So, due to this consideration, we hurry the wedding up. We actually advance the wedding before we start observing Avelus. We take the mace, put them into a side room, and we proceed with the wedding. We bring the chasm of kal to the chupa. Uboil bilas mitzvah is involved in the first interaction. Bilas mitzvah. Taisa says it's called bilas mitzvah because this is what makes the ish a receptacle, a kli, and that's how they form that closeness. And it comes to proper mitzvah of pruravu. That's why the biilu rishon is called bilas mitzvah. So in any case, we proceed as usual, as if there is no maze here. Upayrish. So after that first interaction. That's it, it separates Vinoyak Shivas Miyamishta. But we proceed with the um, we, we bury the mace, obviously, and then they proceed to the seven Yimeya Mishta. Because as Rashi says, that takes priority. It's like a yamtiv. It's like regal that comes first. And then afterwards they begin observing the Shiva in honor of the mace. Vachakach afterwards, Noyek Shivas Miyavelus. And uh, we'll see the Hamshech uh, continuation of the Brisa tomorrow. So bottom line is, this is the situation which we are facing. This is the Oynas that the Brisa refers to. It was a mace. And we have to hurry things up in order to get the wedding on the way. And then uh, to do the Kfura, etc. So in such a situation, we are justified in pushing back the wedding. Magdim, the wedding to Monday, in order to accommodate... Uh, the, the wedding and the mace, Shiva Simeya which is followed immediately by the Shiva Simeya okay, So, what did we learn today? We started with Oynes Begitten. So, a fellow gave a get on condition, condition that uh, he doesn't come back within 12 months. He tried to come back, he was held up by an Oynes. What would you say? Condition was met, get is chal or not? According to the first version of Rava, we uh, reckon with the fact that it's an oynas, and we don't hold him accountable. But with the Rabbana, we're concerned about the tznois, about the prutzois. Perhaps the tznois will be overly uh, concerned, they'll overreact, they'll, they'll uh, con- concern themselves with, a, with, a, with an oynas, with a possible oynas, even though it wasn't actually an oynas, and they're not going to want to use that yet. On the other hand, you have a prutza. There was an oynas, she'll ignore the fact that it's an oynas, and she'll treat it as a valid get because of those concerns. We discount the oynas consideration and the get as a get. How did the Rabban do that? They took an ishas ish and allowed her to remarry because initially the condition done by this fellow was conditioned upon the das chachamim, who in this case say no condition, no marriage. According to version number two of Rava, even by Gitten we say yesh oynas begitten. We reckon with the fact that it's an oynas and. If his um, non-return was due to something beyond his control, it is not considered a non-return, in which case uh, the condition was not kept and the get is not chal. We had one exception where he could have anticipated the, uh, the uh, circumstance, he should have stipulated it, and his lack of stipulation indicates lack of uh, interest, indicates indifference, in which case we don't reckon with the oinus consideration. Now, we learn in the Mishnah that a B'sula has a set, designated day for marriage, Wednesday. Why Wednesday? Because it's a day before the Bezdin holds court. We want him to be uh, able to approach the Bezdin if there's any concern with her status. The Gemara tells us that's only when, in fact, Bezdin will hold session on Monday's end 
Thursdays. But otherwise, there's no point in marrying on Wednesday. Why not marry on Sunday, which is the day before Monday, time of Bezdin, because we want him to prepare properly for the Suda. But if he's already all prepared, then that consideration would not be applicable. The Brisa tells us, in the situation of Sakana, which the Gemara learns to mean that the Hegemon is threatening to forcibly get involved with the Isha as married, which can lead to Sakana because of its noise, because of the uh, Kaihanois. In that case, the Minig was to switch it to, uh, to Tuesday, and the Hegemon wouldn't bother showing up on Tuesday when it's, uh, it's not sure there's a wedding in town. And then the Brisa says if there's an Oynas involved, you go back to Monday, the Gemara says, uh, Oynas, what is that? We have two options. Either uh, the troops are coming to uh, steal the wedding provisions, or we're speaking that there was a mace in the family, and we have to hurry things up to accommodate that concern as well. All the best to you, Psurus Tevis, and Atzlach Rabba.